and on May 12, 2019, Pope Francis officially authorized pilgrimages to Medjugorje with, quote, care to prevent these pilgrimages from being interpreted as an authentication of known events, which still require examination by the Church, end quote, according to a Vatican spokesman. Since Pope Francis has already expressed approval toward the Ruini Commission's report, again calling it, quote, very, very good, it would seem that a question mark over Medjugorje is quickly vanishing. But in defense of those who fear Medjugorje, many of them are victims of the smear campaign that I discussed in Medjugorje, What You May Not Know. As a result, they will rehash the several smoking guns that prove Medjugorje is false. So the following dissects these objections into two sections. The first deals with crucial insights on discerning private revelation. The second deals with specific misinterpretations, misinformation, and outright falsehoods being spread about this century's most famous apparition site. Section 1. The Smoking Gun Mentality There has emerged in our hyper-rationalist era a kind of smoking gun mentality, where skeptics look for the slightest weakness, one negative fruit, one questionable message, one wrong facial expression, a character flaw, as proof, therefore, that the apparitions of Medjugorje or elsewhere are false. Here are the three general smoking guns that some critics claim will invalidate an entire phenomenon. 1. The seer must be holy. On the contrary, just as God appeared in a burning bush to Moses after he had murdered an Egyptian, so too, apparitions, locutions, visions, etc., come to those whom God chooses, not those who are most worthy. Quote, Union with God by charity is not requisite in order to have the gift of prophecy, and thus it was at times bestowed even upon sinners. End quote. Pope Benedict XIV in Heroic Virtue, Volume 3, page 160. As such, the Church recognizes that the instrument God chooses is fallible, and though they expect that the revelations given to that soul will also bear the fruit of increasing holiness, perfection is not a prerequisite for proof. But even holiness is no guarantee. Saint Hannibal, who was the spiritual director for Melanie Calvada de la Salette and servant of God Luisa Picaretta, wrote, quote, being taught by the teachings of several mystics, I have always deemed that the teachings and locutions of even holy persons, especially women, may contain deceptions. Poulain attributes errors even to the saints the Church venerates on the altars. How many contradictions we see between Saint Brigitte, Mary of Agrita, Catherine Emmerich, etc. We cannot consider the revelations and the locutions as words of scripture. Some of them must be omitted, and others explained in a right, prudent meaning." End quote. I am truthfully astonished at how brutal some critics are on alleged seers, as if they are punching bags, not people. They have absolutely no clue how much visionaries suffer persecution, are often abandoned by their bishops, members of their community, and even family. As St. John of the Cross said, quote, these humble souls, far from desiring to be anyone's teacher, are ready to take a road different from the one they are following, if told to do so." End quote. 2. The messages must be flawless. On the contrary, Rev. Joseph Iannuzzi, a mystical theologian whose work has been commended by the Vatican, notes, quote, It may come as a shock to some, that nearly all mystical literature contains grammatical errors or form and, on occasion, doctrinal errors or substance." End quote. The reason, says Cardinal Ratzinger, is we are dealing with humans, not angels. Quote, Neither should the images of a revelation be thought of as if for a moment the veil of the other world were drawn back with heaven appearing in its pure essence 
as one day we hope to see it in our definitive union with God. Rather, the images are, in a manner of speaking, a synthesis of impulse coming from on high and the capacity to receive this impulse in the visionaries, that is, the children, end quote, message of Fatima. Theological background, education, vocabulary, intelligence, imagination, are all filters through which revelations pass. Filters, notes Reverend Ianuzzi, which can involuntarily alter the message or its meaning. Quote, Conforming to prudence and sacred accuracy, people cannot deal with private revelations as if they were canonical books or decrees of the Holy See. For example, who could ratify in full all the visions of Catherine Emmerich and St. Brigitte, which show evident discrepancies? End quote. St. Hannibal in a letter to Father Peter Bergamaschi. Indeed, these saints had to be edited from time to time to remove errors. Shocking? No, human. The bottom line, quote, such occasional occurrences of flawed prophetic habit should not lead to the condemnation of the entire body of the supernatural knowledge communicated by the prophet, if it is properly discerned to constitute authentic prophecy. Nor, in cases of the examination of such individuals for beatification or canonization, should their cases be dismissed, according to Benedict the Fourteenth, as long as the individual had humbly acknowledged his error when it was brought to his intention. End quote. Dr. Mark Miravalli. Moreover, neither does the Church isolate one questionable passage from the entire context of the mystics' writings. Quote, Although in some passages of their writings, the prophets may have written something doctrinally erroneous, a cross-reference of their writings reveal that such doctrinal errors were unintentional. Rev. Joseph Iannuzzi 3. It's private revelation so I don't have to believe it anyway. This is technically true, but with caveats. Too often, this argument is not a smoking gun, but smoke and mirrors. On the contrary, says Pope Benedict XIV, quote, he to whom that private revelation is proposed and announced ought to believe and obey the command or message of God if it be proposed to him on sufficient evidence. For God speaks to him, at least by means of another, and therefore requires him to believe. Hence it is that he is bound to believe God, who requires him to do so." End quote. And Pope St. John the 22nd exhorts, quote, We urge you to listen with simplicity of heart and sincerity of mind to the salutary warnings of the Mother of God. The Roman pontiffs, if they are instituted the guardians and interpreters of divine revelation, contained in Holy Scripture and tradition. They also take it as their duty to recommend to the attention of the faithful when, after responsible examination, they judge it for the common good. The supernatural lights which it has pleased God to dispense freely to certain privileged souls, not for proposing new doctrines, but to guide us in our conduct." End quote. Thus, can you reject private revelation? Quote, are they to whom a revelation is made, and who are certain it comes from God, bound to give a firm assent thereto? The answer is in the affirmative. End quote. And this so long as the revelation is consistent with the public revelation of Christ. Quote, it is not the so-called private revelation's role to improve or complete Christ's definitive revelation but to help live more fully by it in a certain period of history. Guided by the magisterium of the Church, the census fidelium knows how to discern and welcome in these revelations whatever constitutes an authentic call of Christ or His saints to the Church. Christian faith cannot accept revelations that claim to surpass or correct the revelation of which Christ is the fulfillment." End quote. Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 67. All that said, 
because private revelation is not part of the definitive public revelation of Christ. Quote, One may refuse to assent to private revelation without direct injury to Catholic faith as long as he does so modestly, not without reason, and without contempt. End quote. Pope Benedict XIV. It is the not without reason part that needs to be addressed with regards to Medjugorje.